How's it going guys, Vapov here and welcome back to another video. Now if you thought flagship smartphones in 2020 were priced high enough, wait till you hear what 2021 has in store. Of course, if we can actually get to that here in one piece. It looks like everything's happened in 2020 and we're not even halfway there. But enough of that, let's talk about Qualcomm. They're already preparing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 processor to be announced next year alongside all of the other flagship smartphones we're gonna see next year and it's rumored to be first announced on a Xiaomi phone but I think the S21 or the S30 series from Samsung Galaxy is going to take precedence when it comes to the first international phone coming out with the processor but let's take a step back and look at the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 5G processor. There is sort of two ways to look at this. The 5G aspect of the 865 was actually an increment when it came from the 855 and the 855 plus and for anyone who doesn't know the 8 series of processors from Qualcomm is the flagship tier so basically any smartphone that is high-end, the Galaxy S20 series, the OnePlus 8 series, the Oppo Find X2 series, all of these smartphones have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 or the 8 series of processors. So again, the 865 brought in 5G support and it was sort of embraced by all consumers because it was bringing in 5G support. So the price hike was justified from 4G to 5G, the same way it was from 3G to 4G back when, you know, 4G was the wave when it came to smartphone tech. But with the 875 also bringing an increment in terms of price, consumers are sort of wondering why that is. And I feel like Qualcomm is sort of truly taking advantage of it being a monopoly when it comes to manufacturing all of these chipsets. And to be honest, that's not really fair game. We've seen other manufacturers like for example, Samsung's Exynos, um, MediaTek, or even um, Huawei with its high silicon Kirin processor. All of these processors are still out there, but people or OEMs or manufacturers don't really opt for them because they know Qualcomm is proven and Qualcomm is truly taking advantage of that. It looks like the 875 chipset is actually going to be $100 more expensive than the current chipset combination that we see with the 865 and the 5G modem. Now, Qualcomm played a nice game this year as well, with the 5G modem actually being forced upon on OEMs if they wanted to use the 865 power, which meant that smartphones like the OnePlus 8 series, the Oppo Find X2 Pro for example, all of these were seen with a price hike. So they haven't really been the true flagship killers, they've become the flagship and I think with the 875, we're gonna see more and more of that. But let's take a look at why the 875 is going to be so expensive. There's three reasons, main ones, that I think it's going to be the case. The first one is that it's going to be manufactured on a 5 nanometer transistor process. What does that mean? Well, the smartphones we see these days, the flagship ones, are manufactured on a 7 nanometer transistor process, which means the size of the transistors inside the processor is actually 7 nanometers. Now, with a decrement in size, you're not only going to see a decrement in the overall size of the processor, but but you're also going to be seeing improved power efficiency and more power because more transistors means more power. So at the end of the day, you're getting a better processor for your money. But it's more expensive and that's one big hurdle that many OEMs are either going to have to take on or they're going to have to push to the consumer with higher price tags for their smartphones and that's something they cannot afford to do when the market overall is suffering not just with smartphones but with pretty much every industry in the world right now. The other reason why the 875 processor is going to be more expensive is because it's going to bring a new core. Now the 865 processor we saw this year has two main cores. It has the a55 Cortex and the A77 Cortex, but it looks like with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 875 chipset, we're going to be seeing a new A78 Cortex, which is going to bring a 20% increment when it comes to your overall smartphone performance, but we're also going to be seeing a Cortex a or a Cortex X1 and that basically is going to bring a 30% increment over the current gen A77 Cortex core and I think the X1 is going to be reserved for ARM based computers and that's something that Apple is also going for with its next generation of processors so that could tie in with what um, Qualcomm wants to do and that's a whole separate story we're not going to be talking about that but let's actually come to the third reason why the 875 chipset is going to be priced 
that way. I think the third reason is because it's going to improve 5G capabilities overall. So if you were listening, and I know this is a more complex video topic that not everyone is going to get, the 865 5G modem was an X55 modem, whereas the 875 5G modem is going to be an X60 modem, which is going to bring support for both sub 6 gigahertz 5G as well as MMWave 5G, both simultaneously. But that begs the question, do we actually need 5G? Now, considering I've got so many 5G phones here, have I used it that extensively? Well, not really, because I haven't gone out of my house for the last three or four months. And before that, 5G wasn't as developed. And I don't think it's any more developed nowadays. I mean, even uh, developed and, you know, high-end countries like the USA is facing problems with 5G implementation. So it's going to take a lot of time. And for smartphone manufacturers or chip manufacturers in general to really shove down this increment in price for OEMs is something that's not warranted and sort of opens up the door for companies like MediaTek, companies like um, Kirin, companies like Exynos for example, MediaTek in specific because they've released the Dimensity 800 as well as a 1000 5G chipset. And what that means is some OEMs are going to opting for that chipset which could make a dent in Qualcomm or Snapdragon's overall sort of market value and basically with people adopting these sort of chipsets because this kind of increment every year is not warranted. We could take this as a one-off, but then let's say in maybe one year when Qualcomm develops, you know, a four nanometer process, we're going to be seeing a hike once again in terms of price tag. And that's just not something that, you know, smartphone manufacturers like OnePlus, for example, can take on board. Maybe that's why they're actually making a Nord company a separate company to bring out budget smartphones because they know OnePlus is out of reach and they already have the trends for what the future holds. So that's a very interesting topic and what that means is people might actually sacrifice on other things. They might sacrifice on camera lenses and that's what the article says here. They might lower down the delivery price of camera lenses. They might sacrifice on battery. But I think one major thing the 875 brings and I think it's going to be a major selling point for a lot of these smartphones coming out next year is going to be better batteries. So according to the 875 uh, feature leak, we're seeing that it's going to support up to 100 watt fast charging. So the fastest charging we see nowadays is 65 watt on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. 100 watt definitely is going to bring a huge improvement when it comes to charging. We know Xiaomi is already working on a device as such. We know Oppo is working on this technology as well, but it's going to deter the battery life on the overall when it comes to longevity. And that's something that consumers will have to get used to, or they might even not opt for this kind of technology. I feel like 100 watt is sort of unnecessary. 65 watt, you know, charging this phone in 38 to 40 minutes is plenty. Why would you need a technology that halves that when the overall utility that you're getting for actually charging the phone isn't that much? It comes down to what people want. Maybe people want their smartphones to charge in an instant. And for that case, they might go with a external battery, you know, a replaceable battery. And that's something that people are speaking about too. And I made a video about that as well. But 100 watt charging is basically coming from this Weibo source. Again, I'm just going to translate it on the fly here so you guys can understand. But Basically, the main selling point of the Q1 gaming phone is going to be the 875 plus the 100 watt charging. So a large battery plus super fast um, in terms of processing power, all of that. And I guess, of course, that makes sense. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this whole situation with Qualcomm as well as other chip manufacturers. Do you really think people are going to be adopting this change in price tag once again and in a market where sort of the low end to mid range market is thriving i don't really see how qualcomm or any oem is going to successfully sell even higher price tag phones when people can get a similar experience if not the same with lower priced uh, smartphones and they can change them every three months every six months and this is something that i talked about in my last video as well you can go check that out if you're interested but that's about it for this one let me know what you guys think about qualcomm monopolizing the market i really don't think it's fair and i hope mediatek kirin or exynos jump into the game and sort of become the AMD of the mobile processing unit and how it's overthrown or overshadowed Intel's laptop processors and how many reviewers now are recommending AMD over Intel. Maybe in a year or two, we're going to be seeing MediaTek being recommended over Qualcomm. We don't know what the future holds. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Thanks for watching. This was Vabov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.